10 whiskies from Kule. And we have the Connemara and Tarconel as well. Mm -hmm. There are several, well, sets out there in the market. We focus on this uh, four bottle or miniature set uh, where we will taste from. But there are as well those big bottles here on the cask and they are affordable. Today we have affordable mm -hmm. whiskies ranging from 15 euros, dollars, pounds up to 25. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you if you always say 15, 15 in Germany, mm -hmm. if you have higher taxes, then uh, it's, it's a lot more. It's a lot more, yes. Yeah. So th yeah, the lower the price of a whiskey is, the more mm. different uh, different differences. Yeah, it's it's hard to prices. hard to tell prices if you go uh, above the border lines. So uh, yeah, but this time I have a bit of an announcement. So this time we are. A bit more innovative last time i told you we will go on facebook live and twitch and we didn't make it onto twitch for some reason we have i think we have html error 5000 and we can't figure out what it is so sorry about that if you wanted to watch it on twitch <laughs> <laughs> yeah but we're running on facebook i think we are running on facebook today as well so yeah and if you want to Want to go to whiskey.com? Whiskey.com slash live is always the place to be. So uh, let's dive right into the distillery, right? Yeah, probably we, we, we talk a little bit up front because uh, this time I think uh, we have very short note notice to this video. Ah, so, so yeah. There will be some announcements and, and, and bells ringing in the channels. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. And here from Brazil, from Spain, from Finland. Very good. Hello. This one is from Cologne. <laughs> <laughs> Romania, Canada. Wonderful. All around the world. We love. We like that. Yeah. Okay. No. Yeah. No. No. Everybody tuned in. Right. Cool. Cool. Everybody tuned in. <laughs> so just a dozen. <laughs> <laughs> just a dozen. Yeah. The thing is, uh, it's a bit, a uh, bit of a problem. Uh, we we always see that the. The what you call it the the number of people who drop in 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 summer is is quite low because it's just that hot and yeah whiskey yeah. is kind of a a cozy drink for the winter yeah but uh, this video will be later uh, available yeah available on YouTube and then it collects really numbers sure, sure. so they collect more uh, visits than the normal videos yeah it's just because we we give a bit more. Information focus and, and a bit longer yeah. and a bit inter more interesting into the, yeah. the deeper subjects. So if you have a sequence of whiskies, or if you have several whiskies, you have to bring them into sequence. And uh, this time, the first is the Kilbegan blend to show the label. Uh, this is the starter. Uh, it has a screw cap. Uh, it's, as I said, affordable uh, blended whiskey. We start with that, it's 40% ABV. Then we have a single grain, and typically I would place the single grain always in front of a blend because of the malt whiskey in it. Mm -hmm. But in this case, uh, we have a, uh, a selection of different casks. There are Peaks, Sherry cask in it, there are Madeira casks, uh, Bordeaux, red wine cask, and of course, bourbon casks. So this one is supercharged by casks. <laughs> so this one is... Uh, on place two. Then we have the Tirconel, uh, a single malt whiskey. And the last one is the Connemara as well, a single malt whiskey, but strongly peated. So this is the range. Those two have 43% ABV. There had been one eight year old out there, single grain with 40% ABV, but it was replaced by this one without an age statement and 43% uh, ABV. So you get 3% ABV more and lose the age. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. it. Yeah. We start. Starting with this one. We st uh, no, we, we start with a bit of an introduction about oh, the distillery. The the so yeah. the Cooley distillery was uh, bought by a guy named John Teeling in 1987. And I can't, how do you pronounce the distillery name? Uh, Shemichi uh, Teoranta. Uh, this is this is Gaelic. Gaelic. This ah, is Gaelic. a special uh, Irish Gaelic. Okay. And, and in Scotland, you have only uh, very very few people still talking Gaelic, but 
in Ireland, you have 1.6 million talking Gaelic. So they will pronounce that much better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but before that, it was uh, owned by the state. Mm -hmm. And it was producing pharmaceutical alcohol, uh, alcohol made from potatoes. Yeah. And so it was... Very good vodka. Very good, very good <laughs> vodka. Yeah, high, high proof vodka. Yeah. Very, very high distilled. So it was a column still distillery. Mm -hmm. So John Teeling bought a column still distillery. Um, yeah, but he didn't always want to uh, produce column still whiskey. So he went, uh, later then uh, got uh, pot still whiskeys two years later. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we're going to see them today. So. so in this picture, you see in the back a tower. In this tower, the column stills are located. And where the, uh, the tower broadens up to the right, there you have the two pot stills located. In the front, there is, I think, uh, offices as well as yeah, I think most of that is, is, is offices. Yeah, this is the new entrance. I returned from Ireland uh, Sunday, last Sunday. Uh, there was the Open, the big golf tournament. And when I drove back to, to Dublin to fly home, uh, I passed the Cooley history. It's not that big a detour. And it was bought by Jim Beam. And then Jim Beam was bought by Santori. There's always a big efficient <laughs> fund. And the Kool-Aid uh, distillery was, well, quite remote, not that uh, uh, brilliant. And now they, they changed the appearance, the outside, this wonderful entrance. Unfortunately, it was Sunday, so everything was closed. Uh, but it now looks very welcoming, very beautiful. So wonderfully made by, by Beam Santori. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is a view from the tower in which the column stills are located down to uh, the courtyard. And it is not done with a drone, no? but uh, yeah, from that tower. And on the right, you see those oranges, those orange uh, uh, table with banks. And this one was covered completely where whiskey is to taste <laughs> from. And uh, it was nine in the morning. <laughs> it was nine in the morning, so we didn't have a taste. And we got a, a very good uh, tour there. And we also saw how casks were uh, in the back in that shed uh, was, well, finally approved for, for filling malt whiskey in it. And there in front, you can see the pipeline from the spirit receiver to the, uh, to the cask filling. Yeah. yeah. Now it's time. Now it's time. <laughs> Thank you. Everything is going exactly as planned. <laughs> More or less. Jim yeah. don't go to the toilet with a, without a plan. It's called the hand washing plan. <laughs> There's a plan how to wash hands. <laughs> In most of the German uh, companies. <laughs> I haven't written one yet. 30 seconds at least. Yeah, the, the last company I was working for, they had a hand washing plan. It was in, in Czech Republic. It's like, you don't go to the toilet without a plan, German. I'm like, nah, nah, what the, yeah. there was the plan. And it really said how to, to go between the fingers and then go like, <laughs> why? Seriously, why? <laughs> I'm not that German. <laughs> I visited Amazon and they have a plan how you shake hands. As you, this is 98% less contact with your hands <laughs> for bacteria. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? The demolition man? <laughs> I've only seen the German version of Sanfte Grün. <laughs> so, okay, let's, let's focus on the whiskey. <laughs> yeah. So, this is wonderful vanilla caramel. Mm -hmm. This is really a nice one for, for a blended whiskey. This is a wonderful, easy welcoming, gentle note. Yeah. Incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's exactly uh, as you would imagine uh, an Irish whiskey. Sweet, gentle, um, but it doesn't have that much more. It's a sweet bit of vanilla, bit of oak, bit of a roasted note. It's not a deep, complex one, but a, mm -hmm. an easy, Gentle drinking Irish whiskey. Smelling. 
drinking, we are not yet. <laughs> smelling. Not smelling. Cheesy Cheese. smelling. Cheese. Mm -hmm. ah, cheers. Mmm. <laughs> That one mm -hmm. kicks mm -hmm. hefty. Raw. <laughs> this has some peppery note and intense and hefty. Much more than the 40% which I expected. So this is not the alcohol. This is from probably from the cask or, mm -hmm. or the, the pot stills. Mm. Quite strange. A <laughs> <laughs> I really didn't expect so much spiciness in there. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of pepper in there, and it, it says it, it, it's supposed to be mild, silky, smooth, and something like that. Mm -hmm. that I don't find that in comparison to <laughs> Russian vodka, probably. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, he says it's uh, a unique Irish whiskey, like most Irish people, Kilbegan is easygoing and approachable with its own distinctive style. This is its own distinctive <laughs> style. Finest grain and malt whiskies are blended together for a smooth, sweet taste and a lovely malt finish. The finish is not that harsh. The finish is good. Mm -hmm. So I think this one is ideal for Irish coffee, mm -hmm. just to have the kick above the coffee, or for a, a Coke whiskey cola. Mm -hmm. mm. This is intense enough for that. Yeah, if you... If you'd like to have some some kick in your in your drink, definitely, mm -hmm. definitely that would would have punched through. Um, it's one of the entry whiskies. If you have a a closer look here, then you see it's a, a screw on cork, um, and it's it's in terms of money, it's approachable. Let's say it that way. Mm -hmm. But it's um, well above, I would say, the the supermarket whiskies. Yeah, it, it will be available as well in the supermarkets. We will be most yeah. of them, but uh, it's it's above the the no name. It's above the the, the discount ones. Discount um, but sellers. it got a lot more kick than than you know average yeah. whiskey. Yeah. Good. Let's go on with the distilleries. So this is a view not of the Cooley Distillery, but of the Locus Distillery, which is placed in Kilbegan just in the middle of Ireland. And this Kilbegan, or this Locust Distillery, is really old. It's from 1757, and it's the oldest still licensed distillery. But I think it was closed from 1957 on. So it was closed after 200 years of operation. And then uh, it was reopened when uh, Cooley bought that distillery as well. And in front you see the water, and there's a big water wheel in front of the long white house. Uh, in the 18th century, everything has to be done uh, by water power. There was no el electricity there. In the back you see those old stone uh, warehouses. Probably these old things were uh, malting floors because of all those windows. Warehouses would have had less windows. Yeah, and the next one. <laughs> These are the new pot stills in the Locus distillery, which is located in Kilbegan. And you see, still room, caution, do not touch. So those are really fiery hot. <laughs> and you're able to walk just to the red ropes and you might touch them. So this is- Burn yourself. Burn yourself, it's your own responsibility. We told you so. Keep your kids on hand. I think no kids allowed in the distillery below <laughs> something. So, well, this is a working small distillery and those pot still, stills, they look so strange. They have a big pot and that it, such a, uh, a tall, slim uh, neck on top of it. The left one has a window to see the wash boiling and the right one is even smaller for the pot still. Uh, for for the spirit, but Come if, if you see the water or the the, the mash boiling inside the wash bag, Nicht uh, wash bag. Wash, the wash inside the the Bisschen. wash still, uh, that is really really thin. It doesn't that <laughs> <laughs> boil over quite quite Easily, fast. Yeah. So you really have to be quick with the with mm. the heat. Um, 
Probably there's a, he do. a Raspberry Pi controller in it. <laughs> <laughs> it, you it know, and no. you said it's new. It doesn't look that new. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I have no idea where they got them from, but I heard that they were used. I think they were used as well. We'll come to that later, that they use uh, used equipment for the production of malt whiskey. Hmm? Yeah, so this uh, Kilbagan series has a wonderful, wonderful... A uh, small cafe. We had lunch there. It was really, really good. Here we have a look again to the cool industry. You see those old, not old, those industrial uh, buildings. So this is not an old one like the Kilbaggen. This is a newer one established, I think, in the 60s something. Mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure. Tja. So let's. Oh, we forgot. Mm -hmm. Beam Santori bought that distillery, most of them, mm -hmm. for 95 million US dollars. Mm -hmm. So this is quite a lot, but uh, they bought, which is untypical, a lot, a really lot of whiskey uh, in the warehouses with it. Mm -hmm. So they can start immediately building up those brands bigger than the proprietor before the entrepreneur was able to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so now we go on with the Kilbaggen single grain. This one, hefty, heavy bottle. This time with a cork in it. The price, well, what are you doing? Uh, you said something that there is something going on with the casks, right? Yeah. So we had some, uh, we have 43% ABV. And uh, the cask has cask maturation. Yes. sherry, Bordeaux wine, and Madeira, and of course the typical bourbon. And they say it's the complex one. Yes. But it's the single grain. Main, which is typically not complex. So the complexity should come out of the casks. Okay, I'm, I'm You really said it's too few. We still have half. Just because I didn't get enough. <laughs> Sweet, lovely. Mm, yeah, it's it's really vanilla. Some berries. Yeah. Mm. It's it's really different. It it's it's strange. It doesn't feel like a grain uh, because it has that that sherry touch uh, mm -hmm. into it with uh, with berries and, and a bit of a, a fruitiness going on, a little bit of vanilla, and, and you do realize there's a bit of a bourbon character in there, but the 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 sherry character is dominant. Hello from Ireland. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hello to Ireland. You have <laughs> friendly people over there. Mm -hmm. So I stayed a complete week. Yeah. Mm. I like it. I, yeah. I, I didn't think that I would like the, the smell the of the grain. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, the taste is... Yeah, there's the grain. There's the oily part of the grain together with the casks, which are typically more intense with wine casks than the ex-bourbon casks. And the taste is complex, a little bit spicy from the cask, nuttiness in the aftertaste. So this is from the sherry casks, little oakiness, some coconut smelling through. So this is a really a complex one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. From the taste, I would have said, mm, I would have imagined it really strong just because of the remembrance of the last one. No, but the, um, the taste is really oily, really smooth, and just gentle in general, I would say. Mm -hmm. And it has a, yes, it is definitely the complex one. You do have the, the berries and the, fruitiness um, that, that I would say it's a, 
a rosen, silky smooth touch in your mouth. Mm -hmm. So if you, if somebody says, I know grain taste is not his preference. No, really not. But this one is supercharged by casks mm -hmm. and uh, fortified wines. So it, this one, the, the, the grain taste is not that dominant. Not that dominant, but it's still, you still feel that it's, it doesn't have the maltiness. Usually nope. when you have a single malt, you feel a bit of that maltiness. There's always, when you have that grain whiskey, it's a bit of a, a flat tasting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. So. It's, a, it's a good whiskey. And you said uh, before, that used to be uh, a different brand. It used to be the Green Ore. Green Ore had been there with uh, eight years of age. And the Green Ore, is named after the deep sea harbor uh, close to the distillery. Oh, the yeah, distillery right. is located in the northeast of the Republic of Ireland, very close to the border to Northern Ireland, to the British. Mm -hmm. And there we drove over uh, the border and we had a, a, a tarmac uh, with a white line on it. Then the white line stopped in different kind of tarmac. And this was mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> uh, the border in the side we had a uh, old stone wall that ended and, and some wooden uh, fence started uh, so this was the border and there if you drive that road you go from the UK to Ireland to the UK to Ireland it's a straight line <laughs> <laughs> so, so the border is, is, uh, uh, is uh, twisted and you, you go twisted. on a straight line and you cross the country four or five yeah, times yeah. No, not, not that much. Three times. So. Three times. Okay. Yeah, I've been to Green Ore. It was it was quite incredible. Uh, I was standing there on the southern shore. It's kind of a um, kind of a river thing going on, like deep river, and going into the the harbor. And there were like really really big ships going into there, mm -hmm. like and, oil tankers uh, and and yeah, and, and corn corn maize, oh, maize. maize. <laughs> and from that maize, the grain whiskey. Is fabricated. Mm -hmm. I remembered uh, uh, that they, uh, they told about the maze in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. so. Hello let's from Alberta, Canada. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> I think they have it like I don't know, ten o'clock, eleven o'clock, something like that. <laughs> uh, okay. Good. So. The production at Cooley uh, is kind of split into two parts. Mm -hmm. We have one on the one side, we have the malt whiskey, which is about 650,000 liters per year. And then we have 2.6 million liters of grain whiskey per year, which is kind of for both. It's a bit smaller, medium sized distillery. So yeah, 650 liters for pot stills is Normal, mm -hmm. uh, 2.6 million liters of grain whiskey for a grain distillery is subnormal. <laughs> subnormal, a bit yeah. smaller than normal. Yeah. It's just that I don't think they are that big into blend. They do have probably some stuff they uh, blend like the supermarket blends mm -hmm. that they don't go with their own brand. Yes. They only yes. go for, for th their brands. Probably they supply a bit of it, but not that much. Yeah, if you, s you look on that picture, you see the tower in which the column stills are located. And in front of that, there is this uh, flat building with a fence on top of it. And there, if you look at the big windows, there the pot stills are sitting. Mm -hmm. So both uh, productions are very close to each other. Mm -hmm. This is the mash tun, and this is a Scottish one. It comes from the old Moffat distillery, which closed, I think, in the early 80s, in the big recession. And uh, the Cooley distillery bought it because it was, well, affordable. Whoa! Insect. <laughs> Strange. Uh, it was affordable. And uh, in front you see the underback, a very classic uh, mash tun. Uh, with a lid on it to preserve energy. Uh, yeah. And here it says uh, the water comes from the Slipnam Gloch River. The guy from Ireland can correct me on that one. <laughs> <laughs> they have 1.6 million Irish Gaelic speaking people out there. 
It's so, amazing. So all the signs, in all the traffic signs, they have the Gaelic name on top. So you always have to, <laughs> oh, not that, next line. <laughs> to find it, yeah. So the washbacks. You can remember the washbacks. I can't remember the washbacks. Um, there are four malts for malt mash and six for grain mash. And the six ones, I think they are bigger. They are bigger. Uh, because for all those 2.6 million liters, mm. you need more and probably faster. Um, so they all are from stainless steel as well, if I remember right here. Look inside. I can't remember. I think it's, it's a malt mash. The others were too big, too high. Mm -hmm. You can't mount up there. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this is where the, the magic happens and the sugar is turned into alcohol that yeah. we can now then distill. So probably for the uh, column stills, you will have a very fast acting yeast mm -hmm. because you do not want to have that much uh, taste in those column stills whiskies. More or less, you would like to have it neutral. So you would have a, a yeast which acts fast, gives a lot of alcohol. And with a malt whiskey, you would have a yeast which works slower and will produce more aromas with that. Probably. Mm -hmm. I don't know, really. Should be. Okay, so we come to the, the whiskey with the story. The, the horse, the... What, what, how, wait. Try Connor. Nicht try. T-Y-R. Try. By the way, tire. Try... Cornell. Tricornel. <laughs> Tricornel. So the pronunciation yeah. is on the second syllable, mm -hmm. as it is with Kilbaggen. Or Kilbaggen. It's always Tri in the Gaelic Cornel. on the second <laughs> syllable. Okay, so this was a, a very famous horse. horse. And what did it do? It, it won a race, as, okay. as, as a lot of horses <laughs> do. Uh, but it was very young, it was an outsider, and uh, the bats were 1 to 100. That it wins and it won, and that's luck for a horse. Right? I'm not going. I've never went to horse racing. So, I, but I once went to horse races and the bets are one to three, one to four. Oh, okay. That's it. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I remember this bottle. Uh, I used to to handle all the bottles when I was young uh, for shipping, and they used to have a different mm -hmm. different style. They had stars on it and and the horse was smaller and i think it was more gold and now it's more yeah. green mm -hmm. uh, irish green irish green yeah. and uh, the stars looked a little bit like metaxa metaxa this is a, a greek cognac oh okay or, or brandy mm -hmm. okay. yeah Let's so have a try. this one the, the the brand exists since 1762 did they have horse racing back then? <laughs> <laughs> they always had horse racing. <laughs> it was probably invented in, in Greece time, or something in or former times with weapons. <laughs> with weapons. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't call it horse racing, they call it war. <laughs> yeah. I was amazed how late they uh, they invented what, what you what do you call the things that you put your foot foot in, in the, on the uh the Oh, I don't know. The the one that you put on below your saddle and you put your fo foot in. They invented it back in, in, in like the Middle Ages. Uh -huh. in, back in, in Roman times, you just sit on a horse. End of story. <laughs> hmm, someone from, from the Netherlands. Wonderful. This is a malt whiskey. This yeah, my favorite. Yeah, yeah. Now, now you realize that there's a lot different here. It's, it's a malt whiskey now. It's a malt whiskey. Mm. There's oranges. There's a light citrus note in it. Fruitiness. Apple. So it's a fresh maltiness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's amazing. I think it's ex extraordinary fresh. It's it's a lot of green apple with citrus notes. Only a little bit of, of sweetness and a little bit of honey, uh, honey caramel, vanilla, like, like the, a little bit of bourbon character. It was matured in bourbon cast, but 
the distillery character of this uh, what was it? It was the Kool Aid malt. Mm -hmm. uh, must be really deep into the um, the, into the green apple, yeah. mm -hmm. into really green apple. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. Now it shows the pot still character. Mm -hmm. It shows the pot still character you find in the Kilbergen. The extreme spiciness on your tongue. Ho oh, ho! Peppery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Really, this is going through. Big aftertaste on your tongue not mm. in your throat it's it's not bitter at all so it's a younger one and there had been older ones on the market especially finished in different casks mm -hmm. and they were really a lot more expensive than this one this is slightly above 20 so it's a, one of the cheaper single malt whiskies and the others were like three four times as expensive mm -hmm. oh yep. it does have quite some kick we do have a lot of flavor in there, um, a bit of a peppery note as mm -hmm. well going on, but you do have um, a good amount of that fruitiness still still going on there, and it's a, a fresh fruitiness, which is um, not so common in, in whiskies. Usually you do have, if you want to have a fruitiness, you just go for Oloroso casks or some PX casks or some other fruity finish casks. Mm, but this one, I think this one comes straight from the distillate. Mm -hmm. This is a this is a distillery character, yeah, distillery character, heavy whiskey with a good amount of spiciness. Mm -hmm. I like yeah. it. Probably we have a look at the mm -hmm. pot still equipment. Yeah, there you see them, and those still are. Guess what? Bought used <laughs> <laughs> from where? <laughs> from the old Cumber Distillery from Northern Ireland, mm -hmm. uh, east of London Derry. And uh, these stills on the left hand side, you see the wash still, on the right hand side, the spirit still. It's a lot smaller than the wash still. And in front, you see those two coolers or condensers uh, with two well different looking. Uh, exchangers in front if the others didn't weren't sufficient to cool it in a different one or they are preheaters or, or whatever mm. it is and you see the pot stills are from different color the uh, the line arm they are both rising up so you have a better reflux in the pot stills so there's more contact with copper you do not have a reflux bowl in both of them and if you look closer to the wash still, you see that it has uh, a different shining copper uh, in the front uh, pot. So they were repaired. Mm. So they were not made new, but they were repaired. As well as the line arm on top, they, it was added extra. So okay. what they do is they, they do measure the thickness of the copper. Mm -hmm. And when, when it becomes too thin, then I think it's like, what is it, six millimeters or something? No, that's like? four to three. Four to three is like the minimum that you should have. Mm -hmm. And after that, it becomes dangerous of bursting or collapsing or just mm -hmm. in general, breaking in general. And when you see usually where where you have the problem is just at the the, the level where you always fill it because you have a corrosive substance with alcohol. You have bits in it in, in the wash still in front of the peel. and you have a lot of heat mm -hmm. and then you have a moving liquid so it even rubs against the wall. Mm -hmm. So yes, that's the, the, the hardest part is like the bottom just where the, uh, the wash level is. Yeah, this is for pot stills without a rummager running around. Mm -hmm. If you have direct fired pot stills with a rummager, then it's typically the lower part. Where the um, rummager is going. Where the rummager is going, and there you have not only six millimeters but eight millimeters mm -hmm. starting, and you stop at the same thickness at four. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the triconal, I've seen there, uh, forty-three percent ABV. Yeah. Uh, some questions. Oh, uh, we we still have the the. the ah, the spirit safe. The spirit safe. And this one is locked. 
They always tell you, Spirit Saves are locked, and suddenly you look here, it's not locked. No, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so the excise men in Great Britain, they aren't that exact or sharp today as they were. But in Ireland, this is eight years ago, and probably um, there they were locked. The left hand side, you see a, uh, two gorges, one for the density and one for the temperature. Yeah, in the middle, you see uh, the outcoming uh, pipe for the raw uh, spirit. On top, there's the handle. You move it over to the middle cut for extraction, the middle cut. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah greetings from Taiwan. Very good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Greetings from Glasgow. Yeah, the Scottish. Mm -hmm. Watching from Nepal. Yeah. Gurav Gurung from Nepal. Very Nepal. good. Nepal, nice. Do you like the Who band? <laughs> okay, so we're now coming to the column stills. Yeah, the column stills are uh, stills that are really, really tall and they are about, like you know from fractional distilling, so you have a lot of plates in there and behind these entrances there's always a, a plate that you can open the entrance and clean it out. And um, these plates separate the alcohol, let the, the water uh, go through, the, the heavier parts go down and the lighter alcohols rise to the top and then you can separate all the different um, yeah, products at the different extraction points. Um, you can also look through the little watch glasses, how it is burn, uh, boiling, if there's anything blocking in there. Because you do put in the the wash with the bits, mm -hmm. so it it might be a problem of clocking. So every now and then you have to deassemble one of these the um, long column stills, and then you see these plates. This is what these plates in the inside look like, and they come in the different stills come in very very different shapes of these plates. Mm -hmm. Some are just stamped through like this one. Uh, some have little mushroom heads on them and some of them have a hole on the side like this one some of them don't and it, it's really a science of how it's rising how it's falling but i didn't get that much into the science because in the end it's just about efficiency and not about the flavor as we we're a bit more interested in the flavor than the efficiency mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so they have three uh three column stills and they are not split up can we move a picture back, please, or two pictures back? Yeah, this one. You see three, see three column stills. Two of them are working. One is spare. And whenever you rope <laughs> one apart for cleaning and, and repairing for maintenance, then the other uh, goes in and works. Uh, they are insulated, as you can see, so there's not much heat loss. Um, and they are going really through from bottom to top. The building is that tall. In other still houses, they are cut in half. And from the top of the first, uh, there's a pipe going to the bottom of the second so that those tall stills are halved. And this one are really going through. Those are really long, long uh, column stills. Thank you. Yeah, this is a last picture, or one of the last pictures of Kilbaggan, the Locust Distillery in Kilbaggan. In the front, you see the water reservoir, uh, which runs or passes the distillery, still used, I think, for cooling. And on the right hand side, you see this warehouse. Uh, well, it's used partly as a warehouse, partly as a defilling uh, store where you empty the casks uh, for, for bottling. And then you see different casts coming, uh, waiting for, uh, well, for emptying. And this is a look inside one of the newer warehouses. You see those brand new uh, roofs and you see the casks are all palletized and uh, standing up. So they are easy to manipulate with a forklift. Yeah, and uh, they are that full that they place <laughs> the pallets already in in the middle of the uh, the hallways and these are the cars waiting outside uh, i think the the cars waiting outside are usually empty aren't they uh, they are empty <laughs> they are waiting outside to be filled and i think uh, the malt whiskey is filled into casks 
at the distillery in that little shed which we saw from the top of the, the tower and uh, the, the whiskey from Maze. This comes by st Street Tanker to Kilbegan and is there filled then into casks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think there's an advertisement uh, picture because they don't write. Yeah, the thing side. is, uh, the distillery, um, if you look at the cask variation, uh, then you see a lot of the same casks because the Kilbegan distillery or Kule in general um, stores m nearly all of the whiskey in bourbon barrels, ex-bourbon barrels. Mm -hmm. So these are uh, all the barrels that you see there. Only I think the, the single grain does have a bit of uh, other stuff in mm -hmm. there, like what, what did you say, the, the sherry cask, and Bordeaux and Madeira. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So usually you only see probably these casks. I thought about that. Probably this is a single or a malt whiskey cask, which is filled by the malt whiskey from Kilbegan mm. and not from Cooley. Oh, you okay. have to divide them some, sure, somehow. Sure. Only by the number, perhaps by a writing on it. I think a number. Yeah. So here we go. We're in for the Connemara, right? We're in for the Connemara. The Connemara? I got it. You see it? I got it. Oh, you got uh, uh, Kill it. <laughs> <laughs> So the Connemara is quite special because it's Irish a, green. Yeah. Uh, it's a peated one. Yeah. And usually you don't have peated whiskies for the Irish whiskey. Mm, yeah, not anymore. Say, not mm. anymore. Hundreds of years ago, every whiskey was peated because the peat was very cheap, labor was cheap, and uh, coal was expensive for producing hot air. So they always used peat. And then they switched over um, when labor became more and more expensive, that there weren't any uh, peated whiskies left. And I think the Connemara was the first one again peated. Oh, okay. There had been a blend, I think, from the Kilbergen, uh, which was peated as well in the beginning, but these brands survived the uh, evolution process in the distillery. <laughs> so they had, they had the green ore, now they have condensed to the Kilbegan, this uh, name, mm -hmm. the Turconnell was famous enough to keep the name. Uh, okay, so let's have a try how, yeah. how the peaty one tastes like. Do, 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 do. So it's called... Double distilled, huh? Yeah, yeah that's, that's, the, what's, that's what's one of the, the special things about uh, Kool-Aid. Usually all the Irish whiskies are triple distilled. Except Kule, they do double distilling. Yeah, and uh, Lockes, Kilbegan. Kilbegan, yeah. yeah, they belong to them. Two as well. And uh, it's called Connemara, and Connemara is a scenic area in the west of Ireland. And they just adapted the name because it's so famous. <laughs> <laughs> so they attract the tourists with that. Yeah, it says uh, Kilbegan Company Distilling. No, they are producing it in... <laughs> <laughs> Distilled and bottled in Ireland by Kool-Aid okay. Distillery, okay. Riverstone, Dunclark. Yeah. So, so do you think the, they only use the, the Kilbegan whiskey for the, for, for, the the, blend. for the blend? So they started with the Turconnell unpeated and the Connemara peated only with the pot stills from the Kool-Aid Distillery. And to keep mm -hmm. the taste constant, I think they have to stay with that and the additional malt whiskey from the Kilbegan or Locust Distillery in Kilbegan, I think this is the second lead malt for the Kilbegan blend. Mm -hmm. This must be the, the way they produce. Ooh. <sighs> hefty, hefty. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a lot of smoke in there. How much would you reckon? 35, 40. Something like that's, that. Yeah. That's a lot. I would have we we lately tasted the 12 year old. It wasn't that mm -hmm. strong in, in, yeah. in smoke. No. What taste brings the port wine barrel store in? Well, it wasn't port, it was sherry. Uh, and it brings a fruity taste. The fruitiness. And depending on the wood the port or sherry cask is made of, uh, it brings more tannins and more intensity. 
So it's it does have a, a good amount of smoke, but in the back you do find the, the green apple that you had in the Kilbagan and the Triconal as well. So I would really say the the Kool-Aid distilling character is one of these green apple types. Mm -hmm. Also, you have a bit of a flowery note in there yeah, going on. You need quite a while to get rid of that smoke. It's so mm -hmm. intense. I have to smell quite a lot. It's still it's still a bit through. below Isla. Yeah. But it's still uh, a good amount of sm uh, smokiness. Mm -hmm. So it's, a, I would say, definitely a medium to heavy smoky. I stood there on the, the golf uh, parkour looking out on the sea. And what did I see? Mm -hmm. Isla. <laughs> so it's so close to... Yeah, when you when you say I look over there. Ooh, that's Ireland. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, cheers. Cheers. Mm -hmm. In the taste, the pitiness is not that strong, but as soon as you swallow, it covers the inside of your mouth, then you really feel that it's there's smokiness in it. It's first forty percent is a little bit too few, but it comes through a little bit uh, from the cask is coming now. So this one relies very much on the smokiness uh, because it has no age statement. It wouldn't be that old, and the older a whiskey becomes, like the twelve-year-old Calamara. Uh, the smoke uh, converts by uh, by oxidization to more complex notes, so the smoke is getting less and less, but the taste is or the sm uh, smell is much more complex. And this one is still fresh, young, uh, and really smoky. Mm -hmm. And I uh, read a, uh, a comment there. Do you remember this sixty percent? Cask Connemara, yeah, I remember it. Mm -hmm. I didn't have it uh, neat, so I diluted it a little bit. It was very intense and uh, produced a lot of flavors during the uh, reduction of the strength. Mm -hmm. So it was a big thing, but the one I liked most um, is the Distiller's Edition, I think it's called. Uh, it's a finished whiskey and cherry casks. Connemara, mm -hmm. smoky and finished in cherry cast. A wonderful piece of mm -hmm. work. Mm. I find this one, you do have a lot of smoke, but it's it's silky smooth smoke. So it's, uh, I have a bit of a, a rose flavor, a bit of a general flower flavor, a bit of a, yeah, it's very silky, a bit of a honey note, but it's slightly sweet, only very slightly sweet, yeah. with a mm. with a gentle smoke cloud all above it. Mm, I like it. A gentle smoke cloud. <laughs> it's, it's more for me. <laughs> I um, feel that smoke more intense. Many tastings, party time in Finland. <laughs> yeah, it's it's. I think it's quite light there today. They are lying north, like uh, Ireland, mm -hmm. and it was. Uh, uh, Dawn started at 11 or so p.m. Yeah, it depends so on where, are you, where you are in Finland. Finland if yeah. you're in Helsinki, it's a different yeah, it's, thing. Yeah, it's still <laughs> quite in the north. Well, yeah. Helsinki is quite in the north, but yeah. it's... What was the other one? Hammer, Hammerfest? Uh, this is uh, Norway. Norway, oh, but it's, uh, it's near Hammerfest. The, the, it's the other Inari. Inari, Inari, okay. Yeah, but there, you, <laughs> you're near the north pole. Uh, <laughs> Bonfire smoke, yes it is. But mm. there's a little bit of this uh, phenolic note as well. Mm -hmm. I would classify yeah. it more as phenolic note. You have a, um, a very, very gentle um, sea influence in there, or sea taste nuances of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we're nearly at the end. What did you think? Which one is the best? I did like the tri... Turkana, Tur 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 <laughs> the best because it's just uh, such a uh, intense and nice. Uh, An hour ago, flavor. you said the Cormara was no, no, Turkana, then Cormara. Ah, uh -huh, okay. So definitely, uh, I had the same as you as the first one. I like the Turkana as well. Yeah, but it's really good. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's really good. It's a malt. I, I like malt. And for the, for the price, it's a, a really good whiskey. A really good whiskey. But then I do have the, the Connemara. No, just not for me. The second <laughs> one is the single grain. Yeah. I do not like single grains, but this one with all those casks in France. Mm -hmm. It's nice. It's yeah, nice. for me, that's the third place. For, for the price, all are far below 30. Mm -hmm. Each, this one is below 20. They're, they are all not that complex. If you want a very, very, very complex whiskey, maybe the single one. grain. It might be. But um, still, they're really, really easy, yeah. smooth, nice. Which typically the single whiskeys. grains are not the complex ones. Usually, because yeah. they are high distilled. Mm -hmm. So this is mm -hmm. very different. And then the the end is the the, it's the fourth best. Fourth best. <laughs> yeah. So so for you is is uh, the Connemara. One, Third? two, three, four. Ah, okay, okay. So, yeah, the, the Kilbaggin is just the, the entry level. It's still way, way above the, the discount ones. Um, da, 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 da. I had a question. Does uh, lower AVV make peat aroma more intense or does it ma uh, not matter for the most part? Not too, not too into smoky whiskey. But I was curious. Hmm, okay. So there are two kinds of of peated or so smoky whiskey. Uh, some, if you dilute, they lose their peatiness, and some, if you dilute, they increase their peatiness. Uh, typically, I would say, uh, the higher the ABV, the more intense the peatiness is. What I said belonged to the dilution, so it's always good to add a few drops of still water to a whiskey to release the aromas uh, but some are there which lose in smokiness during the some dilution. gain a lot some so gain a lot so. i would be something in between it doesn't matter uh, to very little increase if you go higher abv so something like that it's it doesn't matter that much it just really depends on the brand you buy there's it's just a there's a difference between that one and like a, a really, really, really PT whiskey. Yeah. The PPM yeah. Is, is just the one that. There's a that comment. Gives you. Someone has the 16 year old Tycano and he absolutely loves it. Uh, it was there, but it's becoming more rare and rarer. Yeah, so they're becoming rarer. So the aged, uh, there's a 22 year old Connemara out there as well. Uh, we had it here on the board, but we didn't taste it because we said. They're not em enough uh, for breaking it and can't sell it again afterwards. Okay, so uh, the, the thing was uh, tri uh, the, the triconal. Um, the thing is, they they sold a bit of their stock as well. So hopefully, they just ran out of stock temporarily, mm -hmm. and hopefully they reintroduce it, or the stock will get better, and we will see more of that on the market. Yeah, you can't tell. Uh, Probably it's still available in some markets, some, and some not. So the more mm -hmm. important markets might but have it's, it. But it's rarer. Yeah. It's it's not definitely. But it's as well extremely more expensive. Yeah. Three times, four times as much. Still a good price. <laughs> 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 yeah, not not so for a ten year. There are not whiskey. many uh, aged, long aged uh, Irish whiskey with an age statement. So the twenty two year, the sixteen year old, they are quite rare. Mm -hmm. yeah. Will you be reviewing the Deanston 10 year 50th anniversary Apollo mission bottle? Didn't know that they had one. No. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> maybe they, <laughs> maybe in some of the meetings, what we're going to try next, we're going to find that bottle. <laughs> there you see it. Kraftrad Alex. Tür Cornell. Tür Cornell. <laughs> this was Turkish. Tür Cornell. <laughs> These are the guys from uh, from the Elbe. <laughs> yeah, so they, they stayed with us all the, all through both of the, the streams. So thank you very much, you guys, and have a great great night. Hopefully yeah. it doesn't doesn't start to rain. I was was a bit afraid that we'd lose the sound with all the rain coming in. Yeah, but we don't yet. Yeah. So uh -huh. I think that's it for today. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. The next one will not be a one with whiskies. Um, because it's just that much summer and not that many people like to buy or watch whiskey streams. And so next one will be an, an Ask Me Anything stream. So you, we're just gonna bring our favorite whiskeys and we're just gonna sit here and 
answer your questions. So if you have any questions, you can already send them to us um, on whiskey.com or you can just come into the live stream and just chat with us, ask us anything or just bring your whiskey and we will have a lovely live stream together. So yeah, anything else? No. No. So That's yeah, it. thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to see more of that, go to whiskey.com slash live and you will see that regularly we'll post the next live stream in there and you will see when to join us. Thank you very much and see you next time.